Today, it's finally happening. Intel released new Black Edition CPUs, NVIDIA's next gaming GPU gets a release, and next-gen Ryzen 8000 and Intel are incredible. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, it's finally happening. After AMD and Intel recently showed us through their Q4 earnings calls, demand for chips are way down, to the point where AMD is literally making less chips than demand calls for. And with that, we have a new story originally from the Taiwan news site UDN and later reported by Tech Power Up, silicon wafer prices are falling for the first time in three years. That's right, the thing that most every modern chip is made from is finally going down in price. In fact, prices for 12, 8, and 6 inch wafers are all beginning to drop in price as demand continues to plummet. With that said, these are spot prices, so not the actual contract prices, which means it can be some time before we see this transfer into cheaper products. But apparently companies are trying to negotiate their current contracts given those spot prices have fallen. According to the story, we're talking single digit percentages, but this could easily be the beginning of more price drops. Either way, let's hope this leads to cheaper prices for consumers before long. And when you're ready to learn how to actually make CPUs and GPUs, there's no better place to start than with this video's sponsor. Brilliant! And there's no better time because they're now offering their best deal ever. Instead of their usual 7-day trial, you can try out Brilliant for a full 30 days for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermel. If you haven't heard about Brilliant yet, it's the learning platform that was made to teach the STEM field, and that means computer science. But the best part is really how they they teach you. No more reading books or any of that. Instead, you learn by actually doing it yourself. And their classes are awesome, from beginner stuff to more advanced classes like neural networks where you learn how AI works. And they teach you with fun, interactive puzzles. But don't just believe me. Try out Brilliant right now for free for 30 days. I don't know how long this will last, so visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld today. Next up, Intel officially released a new series of CPUs, and we have our first benchmark on one of them. Starting things off, the new series features two new CPUs, the i5-13490F and the i7-13790F. And as you can see, they come in these new, pretty sleek looking black boxes. As far as specs, they're a bit odd. For one, the 13490F is the same 10-core 16-thread part as the 13400F, but has 4 megabytes more L3 cache and 200 megahertz higher clocks. Then the higher end 13790F comes with 3 more megabytes of L3 cache, yet has the same 5.2 gigahertz clocks. One thing that's really odd about this release is that while these parts are clearly billed as more powerful CPUs, they both look to cost slightly less than their non-90 counterparts. With that said, a benchmark for the 13790F was recently leaked. As you can see, it's a CPU-Z benchmark and it scored 836 in single core and 12,139.8 in multi-core. And that seems to get slightly higher than the 13700F. So not a huge difference, but once again, it's cheaper. With all of that said, there is one downside. The CPUs were apparently launched in China only, and it doesn't seem like they have plans for release in the US. But if you're able to get one somehow, they do look to be pretty nice. Next up, NVIDIA's next GPU has finally gotten a release. According to a news story from Video Cards, NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 4070 is set to be released in April. As you can see here, the company sent out embargo dates to their board partners with an April release date, and that's for the sale date, not some announcement or anything like that, but on shelves. Unfortunately, it doesn't mention the announcement date or the embargo date, but that's likely because it only says April. So we don't have an exact date in April, so they obviously wouldn't know when those other dates are. As far as specs, there have been a few different rumors going around, but according to resident leaker Copai 7 Kimmy, there are three sub-variants of the card going around, though there's almost no difference. Either way, these are the closest specs we have from video cards. And of course, I've been over them before, but if you haven't seen it, here they are. Regardless of what the final specs end up being, expect the actual release to be in April. And lastly for today, it looks like AMD and Intel's next-gen CPUs are set to be a massive jump in performance. The story originally comes from a new video by Red Gaming Tech, 
where he's been hearing quite a few things from multiple sources of his. But before I get into that, I do want to update a recent story I discussed. Not long ago, I went over Intel's upcoming Meteor Lake CPUs, where I went over a leak from Raichu regarding their efficiency, and I mentioned these would be 14th gen CPUs. Well, that is true, but according to leaks going around, Meteor Lake won't be coming to high performance desktop, meaning it's mostly made for notebooks and possibly for partner builds. Instead, Intel is apparently planning a Raptor Lake refresh for later this year, likely set to compete with AMD's Ryzen 7000 X3D parts. With that said, their true next generation chips will apparently skip Meteor Lake and move right to Arrow Lake. And it's here that Red Gaming Tech has some very interesting leaks. For starters, he claims that Intel will apparently keep their same 24 core 32 threads. According to him, they were thinking about going up to 40 cores for Halo SKUs, but that's now been changed. And of course, while that doesn't sound all that great, according to him, Intel should be seeing IPC gains of 45% over Alder Lake and around 20% over Meteor Lake. So we're talking some really big performance here. Not only that, but he's claiming a big jump in efficiency, though he didn't give any details. Either way, they didn't stop with their 15th gen CPUs, which I'm assuming is what Intel plans to call these. Red Gaming Tech also gave some really exciting information on AMD's next gen AM5 CPUs, probably called the Ryzen 8000 series, unless AMD skips the numbers again. Here, they claim that we likely won't see an increase in core count, which is a bit of a disappointment given Intel is now up to 24 cores, though of course with only 32 threads. Not only that, but AMD is apparently set to raise the L1 cache significantly with a unified L2 cache, and apparently AMD is planning some kind of unified cache similar to the MCD Infinity cache on their newest GPUs. But when it comes to this, he's hearing a couple different things. Either it would be L3 or some kind of L4 cache. The really big thing here though is that AMD is apparently planning some big IPC gains for Ryzen 8 thousand. In fact, he's claiming that we could see between 22 and 30 percent single threaded IPC gains over Ryzen 7000, which is obviously huge, especially if they boost the clocks along with it. So a massive jump in performance to say the least. All I can say is that between Arrow Lake and Zen 5, things are really set to heat up in the CPU market. So while that does it for today, are you ready for next-gen CPUs or are you more ready for cheaper GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!